Good day. So we're back at the bike races. This is the Elite Men time trial. So we have uh, the guys who you see racing the Tour de France and all the other major races throughout the season, all competing today. Most of them do ride for well-known pro teams. In fact, the rider I'm starting right here rides for Ineos, formerly Team Sky. I did have someone message me on one of the time-lapse videos asking about what watercolors I used. So to reiterate, the watercolors you see here are um, from Richson Art, an American company that make these great colors. They also make the uh, Shiva paint sticks that you will see in some of my other videos that um, are the main medium I use for my large-scale figurative work. Not that it's all figurative, but anyway, my large-scale more museum work. Um, but these, uh, you could, I'll put a link in the comments below about um, their website, but Richson is the, and these are the Yarko watercolors. So right now I'm, I've picked this image, one, because I happen to like this um, rider, um, Ryan Mullen. I did have the chance to paint him uh, in person during the Richmond version of the uh, UCI um, road championships, but he's an Irish rider. And what amused me is these people having a picnic over here are sitting with their dogs, a dog that I happen to be very fond of, Irish wolfhounds. Maybe someday I'll get myself a very big, tall, lean dogs, beautiful gray brindle coats. But um, we've had some big dogs in our time right now. We have a shepherd who may have, you may have seen popping through some of the videos. But this couple is standing here having a picnic with their dogs. They're Irish wolfhounds watching an Irish cyclist go by. So, you know, yes, I'm trying to paint what's happening in the race and what's important and why, you know, the story of the bike racing. But... In all things, you want to make the painting interesting. You want to make it have a meaning of some sort or something. So I was just struck. Also, it's just this beautiful countryside. They're racing through on their way back in towards Harrogate. This stage today is a um, the longest of the time trials, which is common to have the elite men race the greatest distance little still chauvinistic that you know they don't have the women ride the same distances you know <laughs> I'm trying not to say anything so I'll just leave it there um, not trying not to say anything rude so this is just about done getting the ink work in I also love this image for the beautiful countryside and fields that they are racing through. So he's just climbing up over this rise, and at this point, he is, I believe, he is laying in some really good times. Um, it's been a little weird today in that they're not showing most of the time checks, and usually you get a stationary camera video image of just that the riders coming through and so you get a better sense of what's going on but you know we'll call this no picnic huh because <laughs> believe me racing a time trial i've only ever done one in my life it wasn't fun now it was shortly after i was hit by a car for the first time and yes i did say first time um, I was young at the time and, oops, a little dirt on the vapor, so let me clean that off.
but um, and then I went out and did the time trial about a week or so later and had taken a car right to the hip I was young so it was um, recovered fairly quickly didn't break anything although the poor woman who hit me um, said the first time she saw me was when I hit her windshield but first had to have been startling. Now again, she was not paying attention and made a left turn in front of me. But I have been hit 10 times, so be careful out there folks riding. Hopefully what will be the last one was the worst that put me in the hospital. It actually happened to be almost a year before the Richmond World Championships. So getting in the colors laying in some of the field and I'm working warm to cool is the way I like to work. Light to dark, so we're doing the yellow tones first, flesh tones, etc. And I'll just work my way through the palette. The reason for that is to make sure I keep good clean color. So taking some of the cerulean blue to get this t-shirt and if I tried to lay those flesh tones in with the dark color already there, it would have picked it up and moved it in. So I'm just trying to um, make sure. Now this painting is going to end up being fairly analogous in its color scheme. Um, beautiful rolling green countryside with the exception of that one plowed field. And that will be naturally the Irish kit of Ryan Mullen is going to be green as well. I mean, what other color could it be, right? So, and of course they pick their green and they're known for their green because, well, you know, if you've ever seen the Irish countryside, it's all green as well. And, Let's face it, Yorkshire, England is not too far away from Ireland and on the same latitude. That's the word I wanted. Yeah. Sorry, trying to think of my um, geographical terms there. So I had to pick up a little bit extra watercolor today. I'm not super happy with the quality of the color. Um, it wasn't what I was hoping for. I was looking for a hook of green, and this is Windsor Newton, not the Richson art that I like. And it's just, so I'm mixing it with a little blue just to try to get the right quality of green that I want. So, but I will say that one of the things when painting, always mix your color, create your own color. Don't use anything straight out of a tube, if at all possible. I mean, sometimes, yeah, it's the right color, but own it, make it your own, create your own variety of reality. Just realized something here, so I'm going to clean my brush again. But this field color comes further over, which will be good for the painting as well. Make it a little more interesting, not all green. So again, think about what you're painting, what's it going to look like. Clearly you cannot see my source material here, nor will the viewer of your paintings ever see what you painted from, you know. I'm not saying make it out of whole cloth, but that's why we paint and don't photograph is we have the opportunity to change things around a little bit, make it 
make what's on the page what's interesting. Now in this case, I'm not doing things like moving um, light poles or any of that kind of stuff, which I have done. And again, that's why I'm painting and not photographing because I have control of how the piece is put together. And so do you, of course, as you create your image. So you're just getting a different, so I have two different qualities of yellow there. I don't know if you can see. So see how that's a, because they'd use the word brown, but a brown or yellow and that's um, chromatic. It's probably like a Naples yellow. It just gives a little more natural tone to this grass. It was looking a little too. Um, I also notice how I'm making the brush stroke, doing a little hash mark kind of thing, letting the brush do some of the work. These brushes also come from Richson Art. They call them Steve Quiller. Never quite grasped the value of a good brush until I started using these. Because when I use the oil sticks, paint sticks from this company, you don't use brushes. So I've never been quite a um, fanatical about brushes, but boy, they make a difference. All right, so now we're going to work on these dogs, which, like I say, are a brindle gray. Just get the base color in there. Realizing I need a little more of that green up under, well, actually, it's the woman's legs. So we'll get a little of this brindle color, pick up a little bit of this sienna, mix it with a touch of the green to make it a little browner, a little bit of the vermilion. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, that's good. This guy's pants can match or shorts. A couple more striations. This plowed field. Yeah, that looks good. All right. Now let's build the black, and hopefully this hooker's green will give me a good black. Black is a. It's not really black, but I'm just going to mixing a pair of compliments here. So this. Vermilion, yeah, that's pretty good. So I'll lay in Ryan's shorts first. Now, see how I just dapped the brush? There was too much water on the brush. So I just took some of that color out, or water out, so I can get a little more saturation of color. And because we have so many pets in the house, I frequently get animal hair on my brush. That's what I was just pulling off. Disc wheel in the back of his bike. Her black sweater. Black pants. She's a little big, so you know, the whole thing about wearing dark pants to make yourself look a little smaller. All right, just about done. Need to add in this roadway, so I'm going to leave that same black and add some of this um, ultramarine to it. So now I've got a nice, slightly blued black, a little bit different than the black of the... And see, I've got a lot of water on this right now. So that allows me to get a little paler color. In fact, I just picked up more water. So just about done here. So I will take the time to say that, uh, one, I hope you will like what you see. If you do, subscribe, give it a thumbs up. And uh, be sure to check out the blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com, where you can see 
all of my cycling watercolors, some of my other art as well. Just going to move that line a little bit. And also um, make sure to check out the website, gregleach.com. I'll have all that in the description below. Let's put a little bit of, I've actually got a little bit of blue sky. It's been a very wet world championships. So I'm just gonna lay some blue sky off in the distance. All right, there we are. Thanks for taking the time to watch. I hope you enjoyed. I also hope you learned a little something. Yeah, I'm going to turn this. There, look at that. See? That's what we created. Thank you all.